Well, I think DC and Warner Brothers definitely got the note that the other DC movies were too dark. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my spoiler-free review for Justice League. I'm a DC fan, Superman's my favorite superhero, so I was excited and I was nervous going into this movie. And the end result? I enjoyed it. I did. I mean, is it fantastic? Is it strong? Is it a masterpiece? It's none of those things. But is it good? Is it fun? Is it enjoyable? It is those things. It is good. It is fun. It is enjoyable. So, I mean, with all things, there's the positives and the negatives, but let's hit those positives. In the positive column, like I said, it is a lot of fun. And what helped me have fun with this movie was at the very beginning, there's something about the way the dialogue was, the way that the movie was cultivating an atmosphere. It actually started to feel more like a DC animated movie than it did any of their other, you know, epic set piece live action movies and so what that did for me is it started to shift the mode of my brain and so my mode shifted from that wonder woman epic what i loved about man of steel epic the darkness that was in bvs and my mind shifted from that and it shifted over to you know what you would get from a dc animated movie and as soon as my mind made that shift over I really ended up having a lot of fun with a lot of different things. I found myself relaxing a little bit and enjoying it. I thought the characters were great and a lot of fun. It was really cool to meet the Flash. It was great how we met Aquaman and Cyborg and and you know, I Aquaman was a fun character. He wasn't as strong or as big a presence in the movie as I thought he was going to be, but he was really fun when he was in the movie. I enjoyed The Flash. Ezra Miller just did a great job with that role, so I had a lot of fun with The Flash. Really, I had fun with these characters. It was fun with the tension between Bruce Wayne and, you know, Princess Diana. Do they like each other? I think they do, but that's just the Durbin theory. I don't know, but see, a lot of that stuff was really fun. But another thing that instantaneously shifted my mind, the Danny Elfman musical score. As soon as I heard the Batman theme from the first Tim Burton, Michael Keaton Batman movie, I flipped out inside and I went right back to my childhood and I was just like, oh, I love this score. I mean, there's there's Ben Half like Batman on the screen, but that's Michael Keaton Batman music and I was just like, oh my gosh. This is awesome! Uh, sorry, I, I got a little passionate there, but that's how much I enjoyed the musical score. And that was another thing that actually helped my mind take a shift, you know, from putting way too much expectation on this to just kind of having a good time with this for what it is. Now, there's an elephant in the room, and that elephant is Superman died and Batman vs. Superman. And how do you have a Justice League without Superman? So, I will give you zero spoilers. I'll just say this. I like what they did. Hitting the negatives of this movie. Weak villain. I thought Steppenwolf was just super weak and he looked very animated beginning to end. At no part did he even look real. I mean, Avatar exists, okay? Avatar exists. So, I mean, Lord of the Rings exists. We know when you put on a motion capture suit and you put CGI over top of that, we know how good that could look. That This looked bad. It just looked bad. But again, at the beginning, my mind made a shift from looking for this epic cinematic scope to DC animated movie. And so then I just began to let it go. But even that, even if he looked a little too CGI, he just wasn't a strong villain at all for me. He just really wasn't. He, he didn't pose a threat. He didn't raise the stakes for me. But what he was for me is he was a powerful villain looking for powerful objects to do something really powerful, which gave our heroes opportunity to interact and to show off their abilities. This was not a villain-centric film at all. This was so much more about the Justice League forming and, and they're coming together. And so, I don't know. I guess that's just kind of my take on it because the villain was pretty weak. It didn't really ruin the movie for me. It didn't really pull me out, but I did notice. It's just like, wow, that... For the villain that creates the Justice League, he wasn't that strong, but I really did enjoy the heroes, I enjoyed the musical score, and I had a lot of fun with it. And just overall, I mean, it is kind of shallow, okay? It's not like a super deep movie, it's definitely not the level that BVS was, trying to do these layers of symbology and meaning and all this stuff, it was not that. So it wasn't deep, it was kind of shallow, 
But again, let me reverse this and go back. I enjoyed my experience watching this on the big screen. I actually really liked Justice League. I'm pretty excited to own this on Blu-ray and add it to my DC collection. I don't know whether to call this the DCEU now or the DCFU, which sounds like they're being rude to me, but apparently they didn't want to be the DCEU, so I don't know. I'm just going to call them the EU because it sounds better than the FU. Anyway, so I enjoyed Justice League. I'm giving it a B+. What did you think of Justice League? Make sure to let me know in the comments. While you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian. And next to the subscribe button is that bell. Click it so that way you're notified the moment I drop new videos. Like I will be doing my spoiler talk on Justice League with my wife, Laura. And I cannot wait to dive deeper into this movie than I just did. So that's going to be dropping here really soon. So hit that subscribe button. Click that bell. Thank you for checking out Durbanian.